In the final week of the regular season, Bishop Dwinger plays host to Northrop at Shields Field. Northrop, they're good this year. They got that, they got a good running back, uh, a good defense as always. And uh, like last year, they gave us a run for our money uh, last game of the season, so I expect the same thing. I expect the best from Dwinger. They've always been a great team. Uh, we just got to master intensity, and we just got to punch them even harder than what they think they're going to punch us hard. So we just got to come out, uh, play our game, and hopefully come out with a win. Both teams are coming off come from behind wins. The Saints defeated heated rival Snyder last week after trailing at halftime. Just another part of the process, right? Realizing that, you know, being down and being down late that, that we can still respond. And again, our defense stepped up and got us a late turnover and kind of gave us some momentum there to get things going. The Bruins trailed Northside twice last week, but they came back to win in a hard fought 28-27 game. We knew we were down coming out of halftime. We came out with the attitude that can't give up, keep fighting to the end, so that's what we stuck with. Northrop's starting quarterback is sophomore Keon Bates. Bates got his first start of the season in week five against Concordia and has continued to start behind center ever since. He's done an excellent job. The, the biggest thing he's done for us is not turn it over, and that's uh, a tribute to, to him and his poise. You know, he's a He's a good athlete, He's a comp he competes in multiple sports, and, and uh, this is a great experience for him, and um, he's done an excellent job for us in, in what we're asking him to do. Dwinger has developed a solid passing game in recent years. Brendan Lytle is a third-year starting quarterback who has averaged over 150 yards per game in each of his last two seasons. Junior Rocco Sioka is the Saints' leading receiver with 564 yards, and Henry O'Keefe has added 398 receiving yards. You know, Dwinger's usually known as a powerhouse, but it's kind of nice how we spread the ball out a lot more, pass the ball more, and, you know, get everyone involved. And then we establish our run game in a way, so that's nice. Both teams have quality running games. Northrop is led in rushing by Demarius Cowan. Last year, he split carries with Jeremiah Green, who has since graduated. This year, Cowan leads the Bruins and the SAC with over 1,300 yards rushing on the season. I say I've grown a lot. It just comes with hard work and preparation, and it's only going to get better. Dwinger has used multiple backs in their ground game. Devin Tipman is the leading rusher, while KJ and Louie Tipman have also contributed. Each of those backs has averaged over 3.5 yards per carry this season. That's very nice. It uh, takes pressure off the other back and takes pressure off the uh, off Brendan throwing the ball and uh, the receivers. It just opens up our whole offense. Another thing both teams have in common is that they boast some of the SAC's top pass rushers. John Michael Fabini leads the Saints and the SAC with 10 and a half sacks. He also has 16 tackles for loss. I'm very proud of myself and. Uh, I, I mean, I owe it all to my coaches that uh, set it up for me and uh, really show me what to do and uh, uh, carry me and give me success. Northrop's top pass rusher is Jelante Hinton. Hinton is a freshman and has sacked the quarterback six times this year. He also has nine tackles for loss on the season. He is tied with senior Jose Redesindo for the team lead in that category. He's an excellent athlete. He's very coachable. Uh, he's humble. I mean, the sky is the limit for him. And, um, you know, another guy that competes in multiple sports. He's a great wrestler as well, so I'm excited to watch him uh, this, this coming winter. As the regular season nears its end, Northrop is 4-4. Four and four. They open the season by beating Homestead, who is the top team in the SAC. A win this week would secure a plus 500 finish for the regular season. There were some... Uh, things that we had to deal with in the offseason, obviously everybody had to deal with, but uh, we've responded well. Um, we, we have not played well in, in a couple of games, but uh, for the most part, you know, six of our eight games we've really played well uh, and been competitive, and some of those games we, we felt, you know, could have went either way. Um, so it's, it's good to see the maturation of these guys from when they were freshmen, now competing as seniors. Um, they've had to deal with a lot of stuff, and it's, it's uh, it's a tribute to them, and, and we want to send them out the right way here the next few weeks. Dwinger is 7-1 and one and currently ranked second in the SAC behind Homestead. Dwinger has defeated teams such as Carroll, Concordia, Snyder, and Northside. They can win the SAC this week with a win and a Homestead loss. Even so, it's been another great season for the Saints. You can't say enough, right? I mean, the SAC is, a, is an outstanding conference. It's, it's physical, and it's fast, and it's competitive every Friday night. So. Uh, to see that you know we've we've been able to be successful on the scoreboard, you know through through eight weeks uh, for the most part, other than the, 
game against Homestead. Uh, very, very proud. And uh, you know, obviously, it's part of the process that you hope uh, prepares you well enough to, to make a good run in the playoffs. This is Thad Goff for Summit City Sports. The Saints host the Bruins at 7 p.m. at Shields Field tomorrow night.